Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sarah from Dentabest, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD 8 at an AFK exam. Today, I have taken a very interesting and controversial topic that we have is mercury toxicity from dental amalgam. So in this video, students, we are going to talk about uh, starting with the introduction. We should understand first what is a toxicity means, mercury exposure in dental office, what are different factors on which the toxicity depends, amount of mercury that is actually released during manipulation of amalgam, level of mercury toxicity, the symptoms that you have with the mercury toxicity in the oral cavity, other toxic effect of mercury on your body, dental mercury hygiene recommendation and treatment of mercury toxicity. Students, if we start talking about amalgam, we know it's an alloy uh, which has the silver and the mercury. It's an excellent and versatile dental restorative material and it has been amalgam has been in dentistry since 150 years so due to its low cost, ease of application, strength, durability and also bacteriostatic effect. But the mercury that releases in the body and negatively affects your brain, nervous system and kidney. And use of mercury in the oral environment has raised concern ever since it was introduced. Mercury is known toxic. It's a bioaccumulative substance. It often finds its way into the body through the dental amalgam. The researchers agree that the amalgam restoration leach mercury into the mouth, but consistent findings are not available to report whether it has any significant health risk on the patient. What is toxicity? Toxicity is the ability of the material to cause injury to the biological tissues ranging from improper biomechanical function, organ damage, and cell destruction to death. The patient encounter with the mercury vapor during insertion of restoration is very brief, and total amount of mercury vapor released during occluding on amalgam restoration is far below the no effect level. Undoubtedly, small amount of mercury are released during mastication. However, toxic reaction in the patient from these Traces of the mercury penetrating the tooth or sensitization from mercury salt dissolving from the surface of amalgam are extremely rare. But mercury exposure in the dental office, we have to learn some mercury hygiene, disposal of the mercury, the safe handling of the mercury. So prior to use, during storage of raw materials of dental amalgam, how to handle it? During use, during tituration, insertion and condensation, post usage, how to collect and dispose amalgam scrapes, post restoration, finishing and polishing, then removal of any old restoration and how to manage any mercury spills in your dental office. The toxic effect of mercury depends upon amount of exposure, length of exposure, length of mercury accumulation in the body, amount of accumulated mercury and overall health of the patient. The amount of mercury released during manipulation of amalgam, let's see how much it is released. During tituration is 1 to 2 microgram, condensation 6 to 8 microgram, dry polishing 44 microgram, wet polishing 2 to 4 microgram, while removal of amalgam restoration under water spray and high volume suction, mercury vapors releases 15 to 20 microgram. Additional evaluation for 1 minute to remove residual amalgam dust, it can be 1.5 to 2 micrograms. The level of mercury toxicity at level of 4 microgram. This level attributed as the upper limit in the urine when extensive restoration of amalgam is present in the patient's mouth. At level 0 to 25, no known health hazards are detected. At level 25 to 100 microgram, decreased response on tests done for brain conduction, decreased response related to verbal skill. At level 100 to 500 microgram, mild to moderate effects can be seen, irritability, memory loss, depression, tremors, nervous system disturbances. But at a very high level, 500 to 1000 microgram, pronounced symptoms includes inflammation of kidney, tremors and pronounced nervous system disturbances and the swollen gums. Mercury toxicity symptoms in the oral cavity can lead to bleeding gums, alveolar bone loss, loosening of teeth, excessive salivation, foul breath, metallic taste, burning sensation with tingling of lips and face, tissue pigmentation like amalgam tattoo of the gums, stomatitis, soreness in the mouth, ulceration of gingiva, palate and tongue. Mercury toxicity can lead to nervous system involvement with emotional instability, insomnia, tremors, memory loss, motor system, deterioration in motor skill, weakness, immune system, decrease in immunity, renal system, increase in plasma creatinine level, reproductive system, decrease in fer uh, fertility rate and increase in spontaneous stillbirth rate. As per ADA recommendation number 109, you have to train all your personnel in the dental office involved in handling of mercury or dental amalgam regarding the potential hazard of mercury vapors 
and the necessity of observing good hygiene practices. Make personal aware of potential sources of mercury vapor in the operatory that is spills, open storage of used capsule, trituration of amalgam, placement, polishing or removal of amalgam. Personnel also should be knowledgeable about the proper handling of the amalgam waste and be aware of environmental issue. Number third, work in ventilated area with fresh air exchanges and outside exhaust. If the spaces are air conditioned, air conditioning filters should be replaced periodically. Number four, periodically check the dental operatory atmosphere for any mercury vapors. Next is use proper work area design to facilitate spill contamination and cleanup. Flooring covering should be non-absorbent, seamless and easy to clean. Scrape amalgam on carpeted treatment room floor. Over time, scrape and waste amalgam become embedded in the carpet and breaks into smaller and smaller particles. To use only pre-capsulated alloy, discontinues the use of bulk mercury and bulk alloy. Number six, use an amalgamator with a completely enclosed arm. Protective safety cover amalgamator has been completely removed. If encapsulated amalgam is improperly seated in amalgamator arms, the content can be dispersed in an airborne fashion throughout the facility. Number seven, use care in handling the amalgam. Avoid skin contact with mercury or freshly mixed amalgam. Clinician with protective eyewear, protective clothing and surgical face mask. Face mask must secure to facial contour including the facial hair. No standard mask will filter mercury vapor and amalgam particulates smaller than 10 micrometer. Filtration protection varies for different tasks. If possible, recap single-use capsule from pre-capsulated alloy after use. Properly dispose them according to applicable waste disposal laws. Number ninth, use high volume evacuation when finishing or removing amalgam. Evacuation system should have traps or filter. Salvage and store all scrape amalgam that is non-contact amalgam remaining after a procedure in a tightly closed container either dry or under radiography fixer solution. Wearable, feasible, recycle amalgam scrape and waste amalgam. Otherwise, dispose of amalgam scrape and waste amalgam in accordance with applicable laws. Dispose mercury contaminated item in sealed bag according to applicable regulations. Clean up spill mercury properly using trap bottles, tapes or freshly mixed amalgam to pick up droplets. Or use commercial cleanup kits. Do not use a household vacuum cleaner. Remove professional clothing before leaving the workplace. You can see dental office waste management. You can see the switch to pre-capsulated dental amalgam. Then elemented mercury or dental amalgam must never be disposed down the drain or garbage. Recycle or reuse lead shield. Replace or clean amalgam trap regularly. Recycle all elemented amalgam mercury. Never rinse amalgam traps over drain or discard in the garbage. Never discharge large quantities of disinfectants. You can see the central vacuum pump. Clean or replace central vacuum filters regularly. Treat or haul your x-ray fixer. So this is a full drain going here to sewer and waste water treatment plant. That's where the drain is finally going. Now, treatment of mercury toxicity is number one is chelation therapy. The chelating agent to remove heavy metal from the body. Chelation agents are chemical substance that contain molecule of capable of bonding securely to minute particles of metal called metal ion. In addition to directly supporting vital body function, the bonding process called a chelation provide a means of trapping the harmful metals in your bloodstream and making them susceptible to safe excretion in the urine. The process of chelation called chelation therapy is commonly used in treatment of metal poisoning. So, a chelating agent in metal poisoning, whether it is mercury or iron poisoning, it could be given only intramuscular or IV. Chelation therapy for acute inorganic mercury poisoning can be done with DMSA, 2,3-dermacapto, 1-propane sulfonic acid or d or dimercaprol or BAL. Only DMSA is FDA approved for use in children for treating mercury poisoning. Current dosage is required. You can see the chelation therapy. Heavy metal in your bloodstream, lead, iron, arsenic, mercury. You can see this is the artery we have. It can form a plaque and can lead to blockage of your artery. Using a chelator, it will bind to this heavy metal and excrete it in the urine. So dental amalgam, is it safe? It is still widely used by the dental professional most part of the world. But yes, in many countries, it has been banned or imposed serial limitation on the amalgam usage. Several government evaluated the effect of dental amalgam and concluded that the most likely health effect would be due to hypersensitivity or allergy to 
mercury that is considered to be very rare in patients only one in 100 million patients have mercury allergy life sciences research office analyzed studies related to dental amalgam they took mean urinary mercury concentration as the most reliable estimate of mercury exposure 95 percent of study participants show mercury levels below four to five so chewing gums particularly for nicotine along with more amalgam seem to pose the greatest risk of increasing the exposure however who states mercury level in biomarkers such as urine blood or hair does not represent levels in critical organs and tissues so as per ada council on scientific affairs it has concluded that both amalgam and composite materials are considered safe and effective for tooth restoration so in spite of several predictions that has been made regarding dental amalgam it is still considered to be safe and effective as direct restorative material the mercury content in the amalgam has been the cause of such controversy though but if you have proper meticulous mercury hygiene measures and mercury contaminated waste disposal a protocol should be an integrated part of the operation in every dental office